you're gonna have several brushes um, and there's a difference between them. Uh, obviously the size, large and small, but also if you look at this brush, this is called a flat brush and that's because when you turn it sideways, it is flat. This kind of brush is great for getting into corners like, like right here. You'd actually slide sideways and get right into the corner and then pull the opposite direction. And then the other type of brush, sorry, this one is also a flat brush for smaller little corners, smaller little areas. The other type of brush is a round brush, and when you spin this in your fingers, it is round all the way around. And this is good for doing curves um, and getting into small little areas. My favorite brush is this flat brush. I feel like I can do pretty much the entire painting with the flat brush, and then I go back and I do details with the smaller round brushes, typically. If there's a small area like this, this would definitely be um, a good spot for a round brush. People ask me what's the best brush to use, and I always say the best, the, the, the tool that's gonna work best for you. So you experiment a little bit and you can choose which brush you wanna use. Anytime you're not using the brush, if you have paint on it already, please wash it in the water back and forth. And then once it's rinsed out really well, just leave it flat on your table and that will uh, best keep the brushes for the long run. Thank you very much. I wanted to show you, you can turn your canvas to get whatever is the best angle to be very careful and stay inside your lines. Um, and then I wanted to show you in regular time how I use this flat brush. So for straight lines, I'm gonna come kind of sideways with the flat brush. And then for big areas, I use the full width of the flat part. This first coat of paint that you do, it may pick up some of the colors from the background in there and blend together. But if you, if you can hold out and do a second coat of that color, it'll be more pure and, um, and gorgeous. So I'm just doing, I'm gonna cover with one coat first and let it dry. And therefore the colors from underneath won't be blending into my flamingo color. The other thing I wanna put in your head is that maybe you leave some of the background showing through your flamingo at some, in some point. Um, I think it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna leave this wing. Rather than painting this, I'm gonna leave it the tie-dye of the background. And you can watch me go into these little spots here with my flat brush. Oops, I just put my hand in poop. could leave this the background color as well, but I definitely want to accent along the back here so that the back of the flamingo does not blend into the background too much. I want it to stand off. So here I have the base coat of pink done on the flamingo and I need to let this dry or go blow dry it. And then I can do um, a second layer and add some blending of the orange and yellow and some of the other funky colors that I have for it. I wanna show this color blending. So the pink is still wet and I'm grabbing orange on my brush and I'm just slightly running along the edge of the flamingo in a, in a pretty normal looking line. And then what I do is once I have the color all along the edge, I wipe a little bit extra off my brush here and then use the flat part along and I'm going to just blend it into the pink if it's too much orange, you can grab some more pink and blend pink back in. I'll show you that in just a second. The important thing when you're doing this is that your base color, in my case it's pink, is still wet. And then whatever your secondary color is that you're blending in is just um, a 
a similar color, for example, pink and orange are both warm colors, you wouldn't want to blend like red and green together because red and green together make kind of a caca color. All right, so I have all the base colors of my flamingo down. I really like this. Like, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some really cool, just bright accents. And I'm gonna use my small round brush this time. And I'm gonna use that blue because it's a very contrasty color. Um, my base colors are fairly dry. They're not all the way dry, but they're fairly dry. And I wanna show you something because I'm gonna do just some line work. If you have a round brush and you're trying to paint a line, if you have very light pressure on the brush, you're gonna make a skinny line. If you push harder on the brush, you're gonna make a thicker line. So I'm gonna do a combination. I'm gonna be going from light pressure to heavier pressure back to light pressure again. And it's gonna make my line go thin to thick to thin. And so here we go. I'm just gonna go kind of around the outline and I'm following the outline a bit. And then it's not going to be solid, like it's not going to be everywhere, but it's just going to be um, sort of dotted, I guess. Not in a regular pattern, sort of random. Notice um, as I'm doing this to make my hand steady without putting my whole hand on my wet painting, I use my pinky as a kickstand. So I use it to, to hold my hand steady, as steady as possible. If you've ever played pool, you know that they have something called like a cheater stick and you can use your other hand as well. Put your pinky on a place that's dry and then brace your painting hand. You can put your kickstand down too and it'll give you a fairly steady hand. Almost done with this blue color, I think. And then I'm gonna go in with purple and white. And the way you know you're done is just because you like it. <laughs> There's no like formula. The very last thing um, for the painting is, well, not the very last thing, but you can go back with a Sharpie and you can outline again. Or what I like to do is hide the fact that I used a Sharpie. And if you're really, if you've been doing really well with uh, outlining, you can go back with your brush. Or if you think the outlining just looks good how it is, you can just leave it. Uh, you don't have to go back with, with um, anything. If you left enough outline like this, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so you can clean that up as you'd like. And then you can also add your artist signature on your painting. And typically it's at the bottom right hand side, but you can put it wherever you want. And um, you just sign your name. You can do it with the marker if you want, or you can do it with the brush. And um, there's your artist signature. The final, final, final thing, which is super duper fun, is I have a couple colors of glitter. I have this clear, and I have gold, I have green. Um, you wanna take a color that matches. So I would use only the clear or the gold on this painting because I don't have any green. 
But um, once your, your painting is all dry, and my background is all dry already, so we can use that one. I don't know where my big brush went. What did I do with it? I don't know. I would use my big brush if I could find it. It's so funny. Typical. Maybe it's under my painting. <gasps> nope. All right. Well, I'll use the biggest brush I have. I'm gonna take the, the glitter and I'm just gonna paint on top of the background a bit. Now, this background is a water base, meaning um, the paint that you have there, when you touch it with water, it starts smearing. So you, you wanna stay within one color of your background if you're, if you're doing this. Um, otherwise, your colors will start smearing together. Your other option is to blow dry your flamingo and then you can paint the flamingo. This paint is not water soluble, so you can paint over it and it won't smear once it's dry. You just have to make sure it's dry first. 